morning guys here we are for another interview today with the Marshall View so this time it is with Harry Flexman aka Fight Dad how are we doing Harry? Hey Dan doing really well thank you my friend thanks so much for having me on here um this is actually my kind of first ever interview so I'll be honest Ooh, I'm a little I'll bit be nervous you, then. don't worry it's all good it's all <laughs> we'll just chat no worries <laughs> uh, yeah forgive me for every time I say um or forget what I'm talking about Anyway, this is the thing, though, isn't it? as soon as you hear yourself back, because obviously you'll know this from doing um, kind of all the online stuff now, you'll start noticing little things that you do all the time and it really, really gets on your nerves. Like listening to all of these back, I've been going like, 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 and I know I'll do it. I'll do exactly the same here. I'll listen to it again. I'll go back and I'll be going like, like, like. It's so bad. But obviously, you know, you've been you've been doing the online thing for quite a while now. Have you found kind of these these things as well, these little characteristics or or things that you you've noticed doing it yes yeah absolutely i mean there's there's something from like if you look yourself on the screen normally your screen is mirrored so it's just like looking in the mirror so it's very familiar yeah. um but when you you look at yourself the correct way around you're like i'm so imbalanced so like my right shoulder is lower than my left <laughs> and i tend to have a tendency yeah, of putting my head on one side rather than the other yeah. and um yeah like I, I need to go back and see my uh see my physio specialist so I kind of sort it back out again so I understand yeah, that right. so definitely many many times of saying um and uh, I'm actually trying out a trying out a new technique where if I'm recording a video every time I say um I'm trying to train myself to say fuck straight after so okay. yeah, <laughs> and so quickly you're like oh that was a pattern interrupt uh, I'll retake that a little bit or I'll pause and rewind so I can edit it together a bit later yeah well, there we go. <laughs> it's not no, worked completely it. yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about Fight Dad then, um, how it came about, um, what it is in essence, and, and how people can find you. Yeah, of course. It's, um, well, for, for a long time, like I found martial arts to be a really, really powerful vehicle for kind of improvements in self-confidence and uh, the way you think about yourself. And I'd certainly... I uh, found that for me, like even in my younger life, I, I was kind of, from the outside, it looked like I was doing pretty well, but on the inside, I was kind of hollow and didn't really like who I was yeah. until I kind of found martial arts and trained in a bunch of them and actually was like, yeah, I can kind of hold my own in sparring and I, I can I can get hit and be okay. I can, I can get up off the ground and every time I fall down, you just get back up and carry on. And that's as you well know, and anybody watching this, I'm sure that really instills that kind of self-belief in a way. Yeah. And for me, like uh, Fight Dad as a as a brand, I wanted to start something that was that was my own. I'm I'm a member of uh, uh, Carly Stickeran International, which is a uh, worldwide Filipino martial arts uh, style and system. We've got the head of the style, Grandmaster Johan Skalberg, and uh, I'm very proud to be part of that. But I wanted to do something that was kind of mine, not just purely Kali or Filipino martial arts. And that yeah, comes cool. with the kind of the, the some mindset elements and drawing in other elements of different martial arts. And so I, I couldn't call it, couldn't call it Kali Sikran because that's already someone else's. I had to come up with a name of my own. And um, someone said fight dad once and it just kind of just wormed its way into the middle of my brain and it, and it kind of stuck there. Uh, so <laughs> it's is that what it does yeah it sounds kind of like a superhero so yeah yeah that's that's um that's the idea and and the thing is it's not it's not just about me it's going to be it's going to be a vehicle for other people as well and since kind of launching and, and making it a bit more public uh, I, i'm i'm starting to you know attract those people towards the group who are like yeah i kind of feel feel the same way you did or feel the same way you do and we're all on different parts of this same same journey of trying to reconnect with what's meaningful and and do that through you know like martial arts and strength training and kind of conditioning your mind and body to deal with the shit that gets thrown at you basically sure. um, so yeah that that name kind of stuck but that's an awesome name yeah really good it's, it's kind of cool finding um you know fight dads worldwide and <laughs> right, <laughs> fight dads. so uh, you know i've connected with people from loads of people from the uk uh but you know, loads of people from, from Canada and the US and Australia and Spain. And it's, it, 
snowballing into something I never thought it would be, which is quite pleasing. But then also there's a feeling that pressure of making sure I do it right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but that can only be a good thing, hopefully. Definitely. Yeah, most definitely. If something snowballs, it means that you're doing well with it. And obviously there's, a, there's an audience for it and, and you're showing something that's unique. So hats off. Thank you very yeah, much. It's all good. I've seen some of your stuff. Some of my students have bought your stuff as well. And I know that they're really enjoying it. Um, just for a bit of at home training and, you know, some, looking at something different as well. Um, when did it first come about? When was the inception of Fight Dad? And what kind of triggered that initial spark of inspiration? Um, it's, it's something that's been brewing for quite a long time. Like, um, I just said like and um. <laughs> so there we double go. Barrel, but something, <laughs> double whammy. Yeah. There's something that's been brewing for quite a long time. Uh, I've got a, a two, two young kids now and it was, I don't know, when, when, when the first kid came along, like parenthood is weird because there are, there's, you know, countless numbers of people who have, who have done that because obviously the human race has survived and thrived and expanded. But at the same time, it's such an individual feeling experience and going from not being a parent to suddenly being a parent can be quite a big jarring change because all of the stuff you, you wanted to do with your leisure time, you know, pretty much all of that is, is, is put to one side or very, very streamlined. And I was feeling like I was missing out on a lot of stuff that my kind of non-parent friends were still able to do. And then looking at my other friends who've been parents for a couple of years and they're like, they got their, they got their shit together. And, and I'm, I'm in this, this, in the middle. Yeah. this, yeah, there's no man's land in the middle and it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. And I started to kind of hark back to those pre-martial arts feelings of, you know, like a little bit, Bit hollow and disconnected and uh, I didn't like it it was massively uncomfortable uh, uh, kind of kind of painful so I was like I've got to find a way of 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 using this for for something better and there must be like there must be a high proportion of people who feel this way it just doesn't necessarily get talked about that much yeah. so without without shaming anyone or stigmatizing the whole the whole process because it's it's wonderful there's there's some really difficult moments and quite often some kind of dark times but there's a whole lot of joy as well and um uh, it's yeah it's good We've got two kids now and they they finally play together which is which is lovely and How yeah, old? like i say it's not it's not unique but it's also very personal yeah. um, so anyway fr from there that's where i was it's like i have to combine this somehow and it can't just be purely on that martial arts it can't just be purely on the parenting thing um because, uh, you know, I want to think like, I'm, I'm going to be a pretty good dad, but equally, I'm not, you know, I'm not a dad of like 10 kids and I've not studied that. So I didn't feel like I could purely teach that to other people. Just like, hello, I'm here making all the mistakes. Let's make them together is, is more of the approach that I'm taking. So I tried to fuse those two things together. And um, yeah, that's what, that's where Fight Dad kind of came from. And it was really the, the start of the pandemic yeah. where up until that point I was I was building up my school and we were we were growing fairly well we were up to 25 30 members so so by far not the biggest school ever but also uh, you know we were, we were over 10 so we had some really well uh, really well dedicated students who were really on board and I'm just looking blurry let me see if I can sort that camera out Screen. There. How's that? Boom. Much better. Again. There we are. I should draw my own personal focus back. Yeah, segue. Um, yeah, I was, I was building up my school slowly, 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 and we'd be we're training like um, evenings in church halls, so uh, not anywhere near a, a full time centre. And hats off to full time instructors during this time. It's mm -hmm. a speed quite a challenge. emotional and yeah and financial and physical and social challenge for you man i see what you're doing and it's absolutely fantastic you're, Thank you. you're motivating your students every day and looking after them and giving them things to do and giving back and hardly asking for anything and i think that's absolutely fucking brilliant and it's it's, it's the same with pretty much all full-time instructors that i see so I've, i kind of had the luxury of being able to uh, not be tied into that as a, as a income stream 
Yeah. Um, so I've got a boring day job as well, which pays the bills. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was, I was building up my school, but then suddenly COVID hit and we had to just, just close all our classes. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? Uh, I started missing connecting with people sure. and, and helping people and that interaction of the, um, you know, when you see the light bulb go off in somebody's head and they go, ah, I get it now. And you can see that they've, they've been going through a plateau and they suddenly, they suddenly step up and they go, whoa, that, I'm going to mix all my metaphors here, but that jigsaw piece finally fell into place and yeah. they can then move on to the next level. I really missed, really miss helping people get to that point. Um, and yeah, like I said before, because I, I didn't really want to just purely take Kai Sikran online and to find my own vehicle for that. That's where I switch focus from work on my own school to, to work on the online side of things. And the two will probably fuse again in the future when we can finally finally train and uh, <laughs> yeah. and hit each other and grapple again. Uh, yeah. Everyone misses that. Don't they? For sure. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so it's obviously an amazing thing that you're doing. And a lot of people have now moved online just due to circumstances. As you said, professional martial arts instructors have had to adapt and kind of overcome the challenges that the past nearly a year, oh Jesus, nearly a year, have, uh, How has that happened, man? <laughs> it's way too long. This has been like, I swear it's been the quickest, longest year ever. It's just such a weird year because, I don't know, it's, it's gone slowly in some ways, but then it's gone, like, if you think back, it's been nearly a year now. Pretty it's, much, pretty much. Yeah, it, it, happened with that year? It's, um, huh, it's, it's like having small kids, like everything is. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the thing that me, me and my wife say to each other is, long days but short years and it feels like everyone's been experiencing that same same thing for the last 11 months or something now where yeah, yeah every day is like a struggle you know Just sleeping badly yeah. kind of your personal personal self-care and stuff is so easy to go out the window and that then just snowballs into everything else not everything can be just living in your pajamas Binge watching yeah. Netflix and uh, yeah, eating crisps all day. <laughs> but obviously, you're no, offering, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you're offering is obviously something for people to train at home. And obviously, lots of martial artists are now are now going along this route and putting out either Zoom classes live for their students and then opening it up, or doing pre-recorded material and then obviously kind of pushing that as, as a course. What would be your advice um, as someone who's who's kind of done it, launched it, filmed it? done all that what would be your advice to someone who's maybe just thinking about going and doing maybe a course now i think most instructors are, are doing the zoom thing after as we've said 11 months or so but what mm. about a course like putting something out there in terms of their legacy in terms of something they want to film that's their passion and then yeah what would be your advice for just the initial steps maybe um probably seek help Seek help from someone who's done it before and helped others to do to do that before. And my main go-to source of advice is Matthew Chapman, uh, Mittmaster Matt. He knows his stuff inside out. And um, I mean, all of this you can work out on your own and research everything through uh, blog posts and YouTube videos and, and work it out yourself. And there are free tools to do that. I think if you start on Thinkific, you can have, which is the online course platform, yeah. It, it's pretty easy to say easy it's relatively easy to uh, you know set up your course page and upload the videos get them in the right order and and that kind of thing Luke, uh, similarly with video editing there's free editing software and all of these have a lot of tutorials online of you, you kind of go i can't make this bit work with here and and you know the school of google is is truly amazing but what's difficult is uh, finding the difference between the good advice and the less relevant advice. It's not necessarily bad, but it might just not just be precisely relevant to the step that you're on or the path that you're taking. So getting help can, can shortcut a lot of that time. So I, I think of it like a, and like paid help is, is you're swapping money for 
for time. So if you've got a lot of time and not very much money, then by all means, you know, just 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 work it out yourself. You know, try and fail and try and fail and try and fail and try and succeed, and and you'll get there. But uh, as soon as you start getting a bit of revenue in, I, I would definitely recommend uh, some some paid advice because invest it back in. Yeah, exactly. That's investing back in yourself and saving more time means you can be more successful in the, in the future. But in terms of actually getting started, don't do what I did, which was um, I made a I made the, the, the course just to store all of the material I was making for my students. Right. So I just recorded uh, all of the Zoom classes that I was teaching and they're, they're basically solo training workouts that have a focus. Some of them are more uh, you know, fitness with martial arts moves in there based and others are more focused on technical aspects. We have some interaction stuff between the screen and the person on the other side of the camera. And uh, sometimes it takes a bit of visualization. So you're visualizing the attack coming into you and you've got to uh, do whatever response is, is planned for that class. So there's all of my kind of Zoom classes in there. But then I found that some of my students there uh, their schedules have changed massively because of all the job disruptions and some of them have been put on furlough and some of them have lost their jobs and they couldn't make the class times that I was putting on. So I was like, okay, well, I dumped the Zoom classes on there and they, they just weren't watching them because half an hour is too long to get into and they, they were like, oh, I don't know if it's going to be any good. So I started making these shorter tutorial clips that are more like technique tutorials with you know, very simple three, three and three uh, pointers of how to do this, how to make it better and how to use it kind of kind of thing. Um, then I've already built a, a workout program, a fitness program, like four times a week body weight stuff. So I should have that on there as well. And it kind of grew into this monster of about 20 something hours worth of material. And I started getting some, uh, some messages from other people within the, the Carly organization and people that I knew from online. And they're like, well, we haven't got any training um, you know, have you got any YouTube videos we can watch? I was like, oh, I'll just uh, let you into my course. And they're like, oh, it's really good, but it's kind of messy. So I had to go back and edit everything and try and put it in the right order and re-record some of the videos and, you know, record intros and write a guide of how, how to do it kind of thing. And it was, it was painful going back over the old material. <laughs> my next, yeah. next two courses, actually, that I'm currently, currently producing and planning is the order is much better. So I, have a single goal for these short, shorter courses. And then everything is planned out in advance. I'm trying to keep the video length to two, two minutes or, or less. Okay. So it's much more easily uh, consumed. These kind Digestible. of size chunks. Yeah, exactly. Digestible. And there's, there's kind of no extra, there's no extra unrelated stuff. It's not bad or unnecessary. It's just unrelated to that single goal. So it's very much more focused, but taking this planned out session, um, planned out process of here's what I want to achieve. Okay, so the minimum I need to do that is A, B, and C. Okay, how am I going to do A? I'll break that into four sections here. Here's my cues. I'll even write a little script for some of the videos so I know exactly what I'm going to say. I don't ramble too much. Yeah. I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, ramble away. Yeah. Oh, nice. Fantastic. <laughs> But yeah, having that little planned out process and trying to keep it as short and sweet as possible. If you're delivering pure information for someone to go off and work on on their own or with a partner, then yeah, short and sweet of watch this one minute, two minute clip and then go and train that with your buddy for 10 minutes and then come back and watch the next one. That's a really good way of doing it. If you're doing more of the kind of solo training stuff, you could do it in that way and give people suggested workouts of, you know, do technique A, and B, and C, and then put them together in these combinations, set your round timer here. Um, or you could have the, the technique tutorial videos and then also have your live Zoom class if you've done that. It can be like the hybrid combination of the two that someone can uh, do at their own pace or do at their own time. That's, that's what I sort to achieve with my solo training thing. Definitely. And uh, yeah, like oh, over the years, I've done, I've done so much solo training and remote learning. That was actually my original plan pre-pandemic for my kind of first uh, online products would be around around solo training just because I've uh, yeah, done so much of it over my martial arts 
kind of training history where you know there have been a lot of times when i'm away from my main instructors so we'll uh, you know chat on the phone or uh, we used to post dvds to each other of film awesome. ourselves burn it to dvd but uh, post it you know back and forth to each other and, and yeah, yeah. catch up on the phone and kind of watch them through and work out what's going on and then either uh, train it myself in my old garage by oil lamp light at night time <laughs> and uh, or, or training with my kind of one training buddy at the time uh, yeah what was it about carly that initially kind of piqued your interest um well a little bit about my kind of martial arts history was I didn't really start training martial arts till I was in my early 20s. Okay. Uh, before that at school, I was kind of bullied fairly badly until the point where I, where I fought back. There was no technique or anything like that. It was just, uh, it was just rage. And <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people can, can relate to that, that physical side of bullying. And it, it stopped the instant that I, I kind of just fought back. And the people who were bullying me tried to be my friends after that, and that was okay. <laughs> but there was still not that kind of internal, internal confidence. So I found that I was not getting bullied in the same way, but uh, pushed in a direction I didn't want to go in kind of social and psychological situations in my like late teens and early twenties. Okay. And um, yeah, I was I was heading down down the wrong the wrong path with the wrong people yeah. and um, kind of hit this, hit this point where I was like, oh shit, I've got to change something. Otherwise, you know, it's going to end pretty soon. Um, and a mate of mine at the time was uh, convinced me to come to the, to the gym with me, with him. And he said, uh, oh, have you seen, have you seen Capoeira? I was like, what? He said, it's, you, you've seen breakdancing, right? I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's just like that, but fighting. I said, <laughs> yeah okay wicked because this is a class down the road it's starting in half an hour so he kind of you know strung on me into coming along with him into this i think he just wanted to show off how good at breakdancing he was and he was really good so <laughs> he if you're out there man thank you so much mate <laughs> um but yes yeah, i started off training training capoeira and it was it, it blew my mind you're like really close to this person and you're doing this kind of synchronized dance where you're reacting to each other and um you know just missing uh, so the capoeira style i did was uh philosophy bimba probably butchering the pronunciation but it's a, a, a regional style where you tend to stay on your feet a bit more and everything's kind of in rhythm with the music and the singing and uh, it's almost like a, a give and take game where somebody throws something and the other person evades that, throws something back at the same time, and then that other person evades and so on and so forth. There's not a huge amount of contact. There are some takedowns, there's cool stuff in there. And there's not a huge amount of the flashy backflips and somersaults and things, which is good because I could never really do those. Okay. Um, so that, <laughs> that kind of capoeira uh, flow, like, uh, brain and body puzzle was something that really intrigued me and and you know having having not really worked out very much it just completely destroyed my body and I was like this is a brand new stimulus I didn't have the the energy and less of the inclination to hang out with the previous people I was hanging out with so it was just like this kind of complete switch where I was like wait a minute I should probably watch my diet and you know what I'm what I'm putting in my body so that I can perform slightly better at capoeira and that's what set me off so then after that I was at a I was at a heavy metal festival in Germany and I fell over in the mosh pit and put my hand out to catch myself um but it broke my wrist oh. so. <laughs> and it was my, my dominant hand wrist so in the middle of this music festival in the portaloo I suddenly realized that you know, I, I gone for a number two and I was like, oh no, I can't use my, <laughs> my hand. I gotta, I gotta learn how to do this with my left hand, one handed. Uh, okay, cool. So th another little learning curve happening there. But once the cast was off my wrist and I was slowly getting the flexibility back in my wrist, I found that I couldn't put my palm flat on the floor. So I couldn't do cartwheels or any of the ground stuff from Capoeira, but I could make a fist and do knuckle push-ups. Yeah. And, and I was like, 
what other martial arts could I do? And I found a nearest one was, was the Thai Boxing Club. And I was like, Muay Thai? Oh, well, I'll just go check it out. That'll be fine. And fell in love with hitting things and making contact and clinching and throwing people around. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, still train Muay Thai today. So I've, I've done that for a long time. Never, uh, never been on a show, but done some, some good heavy interclub sparring and the the kind of yeah that contact element is something i'm very much missing at the moment yeah but yeah anyway sorry you asked me actually asked me about carly and <laughs> you know, so, yeah, it's so, it's good. Uh, so then I, I moved location for a uh, to go with my job i uh, was looking out for a new muay thai gym I tried out a few of the gyms around in the city i uh, found one where i kind of clicked with the, the instructors who were there and the uh, the students who I trained with and I was like yeah this one's this one's pretty sweet and was chatting with the instructor he was oh we also do these these other classes and I was like hmm you know that Bruce Lee one as well mm -hmm. like yeah so I, I trained a little bit of the Jun Fan JKD and uh, rapidly learned about the history of infighting in JKD so I'm going to make no comments about what is or isn't JKD I trained the Jun Fan class for a while and that was kind of cool as well because it's it's very direct, yeah. intercepting, kind of quite power-based. I enjoyed the trapping being like a, uh, an aggressive attacking trap, that limb immobilization attack where the purpose is to kind of, is to smash your enemy as soon as you can. If there's something in your way, you know, you hit the barrier out the way right. and then hit them anyway. And that, that really appealed to that kind of Muay Thai yeah. directness. Hit stuff side of me <laughs> yeah exactly the kid the caveman who yeah, cave this. <laughs> <laughs> although i trimmed recently just for this very appearance my hair is a little bit wild i'm always interested to see what you're doing with your facial hair in fact because <laughs> i always see a different side sometimes i see your face sometimes i do not see your face every advert on facebook that i see or every post is slightly different it's like beard roulette i like it <laughs> nice well i've got to keep that entertainment value up so definitely yeah you know. Adds an extra dimension to the content. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was training the uh, Jun Fan and, yeah. and Muay Thai, and I was just you know finished one of the Muay Thai classes, and I was wondering if one of the other classes was starting, and it's like what? What's that? They're just like twirling their sticks around. Well, it looks a bit like looks a bit like Morris dancing to me. <laughs> ah, it's not for me. It's not for me. Anyway, I saw the class a few different times, and I thought. Yeah, I don't know. And I chatted to one of the um, one of the Carly instructors there, and he said, "Oh, mate, it's amazing. You gotta you gotta try it. There's so many different dimensions to it." And in my head, I'm still thinking, "Nah, it's just Morris dancing. It's not for me." Um, and finally, anyway, he twisted my arm to try a class, and uh, I absolutely loved it and was hooked from the then on. And looking back, I think it was because it combined the two elements of kind of flow and reaction and brain body puzzle yeah um, but also kind of brutality caveman smash things caveman overkill yeah and i think those two is what's kept me hooked on them that hooked on carly for for so long yeah i've trained like a bunch of other stuff along the way as well and each time i've tried to take those attitudes or strategies or postures back to my own version of Carly just to make it a bit better. So I uh, trained um, uh, Olympic boxing with a two-time Russian champion who was amazing. I could never understand what he said, um, but he used to just hit you until he moved out of the way and then you kind of go, nice. oh, and you're like, oh, cool, I did something good, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Islan, Islan Altuyev, he's, uh, he's a boxing coach in Swindon. Uh, he's got some fairly good uh, uh, amateur fighters under him. Uh, and also trained freestyle um, Olympic wrestling with uh, a guy who's is now training some Bellator fighters oh. and uh, works out of Trojan Free Fighters in Bristol. Actually, I think he's just set up his, his own place now. His name's Saeed Esmaili, uh, an Iranian pedigree, absolutely incredible. And during our wrestling classes, he would he would like quote stoicism and practical philosophy to us. 
while we were still wrestling. And that just, I didn't really know what he was doing at the time, but I was like, oh yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. You know, this kind of struggle to overcome stuff and acceptance of what we can't control and, you know, just, just focusing on what we can influence. And even if we influence it, we can't actually control it, anything inside. The only thing we can really strongly influence is our own, our own reactions. And I mean reactions by not the instant reaction, but the considered reaction. You know, it's that something, something happens and there's some gut response of like, oh, this is shit or, or oh, that's amazing. But then having that internal internal observer or that internal filter that goes, just hang on a second, let's process this just for yeah. half a second, quarter of a second before I actually let anything out. Um, you know, it's that, it's that filter barrier when you're talking to people, you know, you shouldn't swear and stub your toe or whatever. Yeah. And, and stub your toe and what comes out, what comes out is, oh, fuddle sticks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I know what I don't want it to say, but yeah. it's not the right time or place. Sure. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's had a really big influence over me and that kind of postures from wrestling and how to uh, deal with somebody else trying to take you down and trying to take them down at the same time, timing for each shot. That's really helped my kind of Carly empty hands and the grappling element that's, that's in there. But yeah, every time it's kind of come back to how can I make my Carly better, uh, more applicable to wider situations that are firstly like relevant to me but also still fun to train yeah of course that's kind of where it, where it gets to yeah amazing how important do you think that martial arts is for people then what does it do for people's lives in your um in your experience um it's it it can be totally transformative i think i don't understand how some people don't like it i mean i understand <laughs> i understand that they've tried it and don't like it but i'm probably biased every every reason they come up with for why they don't like it, um, i can come up with three or four reasons to overcome or sidestep or get around that in a way that um it, in a way that it could be a really positive vehicle for their own self-improvement and it might be that they've just found the the club or instructor that just doesn't quite gel with either where they are right now or where they want to get to. So if they want to do, you know, martial arts for um, relaxation and they go to a pure fighter's gym, yeah. then those two things don't quite line up. And, you know, and vice versa, of course. Yeah, of course. Or, or it could just be that they, they're quite an informal and relaxed person, but they go to a very traditional gym where they end up like bowing 150 times in <laughs> their first class and, and having to wear this weird uniform and and equally vice versa. Somebody's used to, you know, calling calling the instructor sir or uh, and sensei, and they're kind of you know expecting to bow at every occasion, and they show up to a totally relaxed class and they're like, I, I, I don't know who's in charge, and all of those are totally. You know they're totally valid and so it's about trying to find that style and the instructor and the group of students that fits with uh, what that person wants to achieve and it's just it's just like try it keep trying yeah you know, of course there are other vehicles for uh, personal improvement uh, no there are no other vehicles i'm afraid only <laughs> oh, no. I mean, yeah you're, you're right you're right none of them are nearly as good or nearly as well-rounded so it's <laughs> Yeah, no, it's an incredible thing, and it's it's done, it's done wonders for me. It's um, yeah, it's sa saved my saved my life. It's allowed me to uh, both kind of figuratively and also uh, physically on at least one occasion that I'm, I know of. Yeah. Uh, maybe other times in ways where I've had the self confidence to know I don't need to fight with this idiot. I can I can literally apologize, buy him a drink, and leave because you never know how far that would have otherwise escalated in the in the sliding doors parallel universe realities of course, yeah. um and, it, and it's also you know it's been partly responsible for uh, promotions at work and the confidence to start a family so it's been hugely transformative for me and i know several of my students have had kind 
similar similar effects. Uh, um, uh, one pair of them who came along said, "Well, this has actually been couples therapy for us. We were on the verge of breaking up, and now we're we're stronger than ever." Um, Fantastic. Someone else I've I've helped kind of leave a bad relationship, and uh, countless students have you know given them help with their job application and their preparation for interview, and they've you know suddenly stepped up like three four levels in their in their in their career, and yeah, so it's it's amazing. I, I, Trust I think me. martial arts is the best, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> cool. It's just so, cool, mate. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, where can we find you if people want to know more about Fight Dad? Um, plug yourself. Go for it. Um, yeah, you'll mainly find me mainly find me on Facebook. So search for uh, Fight Dad or for Harry Flexman my personal profile always love to connect with other cool martial artists i mean it's that's one of the really big benefits i found from the pandemic is that instead of being stuck in my own little little local bubble i've suddenly kind of looked up and looked around and gone oh wow there's there's loads of people i can i can learn from out here this is this is amazing so i think i've actually you know connected with the wider martial arts community a whole lot more over the last year which is which is good um, so yeah, you can you can find me on Facebook. You can um, find my website via Dr. Google. Um, I'm also on TikTok. If you're a part of TikTok, and, uh, post intermittently yeah, on that. TikTok. Let's quickly just jump onto that then before we get going. TikTok, you see, this is quite a uh, it's quite a marmite social platform. So some people raving about it, absolutely love it, think it's you know the next best thing. Some people know it is full of eleven year olds doing the floss dance. And I cannot deal with it anymore. What are your thoughts on TikTok? Yeah, it's both of those. It, it's <laughs> uh, it's both of those, and probably more as well. Is yeah. Um, yeah, it is quite a new platform, so it's still finding its feet in terms of how it delivers videos and information to the people who are watching, and. Like all social media platforms, it's looking to keep your attention so that it can show you more adverts and get more ad revenue. Yeah. Uh, and the way it tries to do that is TikTok will just throw a bunch of stuff at you if you're brand new to the platform or your account's brand new and, and see what sticks. So it, see, it learns from what you watch and what you search for and what you follow and what you comment on and what you kind of reply to because you can do a whole bunch of different video replies and stuff like that. And it learns that and it goes, oh, you like this type of content and it will just push more of that towards you and then occasionally sprinkle in some other stuff to go well you've been watching martial arts now for years and years, well, not years for months and months but how about this twerking dance and if you scroll straight past then it goes okay 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 you didn't like that you didn't like that we'll keep going with the martial arts stuff and that's that's how it works on the kind of con consumer end in a very nutshell thing but from a from someone looking to produce videos on there it, it's yeah it's a it's a strange one i found success in going with uh, quite high volume posting so to start with i was posting like three four videos a day um but making sure the videos are short punchy and to the point so if you can if you can catch and keep someone's attention for 10 seconds or 15 seconds, which is the like shortest video, like, well, I mean, you could do short videos, but that's about as short as I can manage to show someone something and say three things. But if you can keep someone's attention for, for 10 or 15 seconds, then the platform's going to like you because you get several plays through of those videos. And then it goes, oh, people are watching this video. So it's going to push it out to more, more people who also like similar stuff that's kind of how you start to get that traction on there. There's a whole load of nuances about it as well. And, and like with the online course creation, you can, you can experiment yourself and find out, find out yourself what works and what doesn't work, or you can, you can get help with it yeah. and, uh, if you want to get on there. Now, something I'm not quite so certain of is what to, what to do with the audience that I've got on there. So I've made some, some pretty good connections with 
real people and it's like the same people commenting on my videos i comment on theirs and it, you know I, those people have then followed me over to to facebook and we've made a good connection on there um but then i think i've got fifteen thousand followers on there so i haven't done that with all of them wow but it's not the same as having fifteen thousand followers on say youtube yeah. it's not like the same maybe maybe a factor of 10 difference in terms of what we can do with that audience to start with. So I'm still working out where to go next on TikTok. Uh, something that's been very, very useful from it is by making my presentation style a whole lot snappier. Right. So if you ever look back at some of my older videos, you know, I'll ramble along for four minutes while teaching one technique. Because sure. uh, it's so easy to love the sound of your own voice if you're not careful. But then uh, TikTok is like, okay, you got 15 seconds. No, too, too late. <laughs> okay right 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 i'm gonna rehearse so i'm gonna show it and i'm gonna say and i'll do it slowly and then oh no i'm out of time okay i need to really really dial this down to what's actually important so that's that's been a very good useful education as well for then coming back to the online course thing and the uh, online learning and teaching how can you really impart that information for somebody who lives in a low attention span world yes yeah. you know, we're in this kind of scrolling world and oh 10 seconds, cool, I can watch that scroll on. Not, ooh, four minutes. Oh yeah, definitely got four minutes to, uh, it's not got to the point, scroll on. If you see what I mean, that's yeah, yeah. that's one of the bigger benefits that I've taken from it so far. Perfect. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you, Harry. We really appreciate the time that you've uh, you've obviously given. You can definitely check out Harry then at fightdad.co.uk. Is that right, .co.uk? That's it. Yeah, obviously check, uh, check him out on TikTok if you're on that. Um, Facebook as well, all the social media platforms, etc. As always, if you enjoyed this, you can find us as well on themarshallview.com, YouTube, um, Facebook, and now Spotify and all the podcasts and things like that as well. Check out my new mic. Do you like it? Do I look more professional now? I like it. It looks perfect, especially just being off to the edge there. It adds some some good, you know, visual interest. I mean, you see, I've got my my plant in the background. Yeah, this is nice. There we go. <laughs> The podcast setup perfect yeah that's the one but no it sounds sounds good man and um yeah i, hope, I see what you're doing online as well and uh, it you. looks to be working really well for your students um i've taken your break falling course and it's it's absolutely fantastic so you need to work out what to do to push that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so many projects so many fingers in pies but we'll, we'll get to it i'm sure definitely no 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 it's good cool. it's, it's really really good man and helped me a lot so thank you for that fantastic all right thank you harry take care and we'll speak to you soon Okay, you too, Dan. Cheers, man.